There was a time in my life when I didn't have anything to eat for about a week. I was living in a city full of strangers with zero dollars to my name. I was hungry and almost homeless. This was in Canada, so it's not strange to find fallen plums from nearby trees. I would eat five to six plums a day, ration it to last throughout the day. I was in a new country, alone, scared, and hungry. The path that led me to that situation is of no concern to us right now, but the all-consuming hunger is. I was sitting in a park bench facing a pizzeria. Inside the glass window, I saw a well-dressed man eating a hot pizza. It was the fourth day of me not having had anything to eat. No amount of description would do justice to the hunger and despair I felt that day. I was looking at the pizza with all the focus I could summon. I wanted that pizza. I needed that pizza. I had to leave the bench I was sitting just to get away from that sight. A couple of days later, I was walking alone in the night. It was a quiet suburban filled with closed shops and locked houses. I passed by a local biryani place. Whenever I had four dollars to spare, I used to have a plate of veggie biryani there. And I was familiar with the owner. He was from Pakistan. I saw him preparing to close up shop. He noticed me and signaled me to come over. I did. He asked me to have some veggie biryani. I told him I didn't have any money and I hadn't eaten in days. He said, and I quote, I didn't ask for any money. It's the final day of Ramadan. Come on, have some with me. Give me company. He was an angel. Without waiting for my reply, he went inside and brought me a plate of hot veggie biryani and raita. He also brought a bowl of milk dessert called kheer. I will never forget the first spoon. When I tasted that delicious spicy biryani after not having had any food in a week, I cried, naturally. That spoonful brought with it some profound realizations about food and our relationship with it. Many years have now passed and I still find myself thinking about that night, that kind man and that plate of veggie biryani. It was life itself. To think about food, we need to first think about the nature of our reality. Two seemingly opposite things in balance with each other. Survival one of the basic principles that keep all life going. From bacteria, viruses, to elephants, lions, and humans, every single thing desperately wants to survive. Even viruses need hosts. Everything is interdependent. We use each other. That's where the other basic principle of life comes in, consumption. To survive, you consume. But consumption often means death to the things that are being consumed. To consume this potato, I depend on the plant's life. And that plant also depends on microbes to survive, grow and thrive. Take anything, be it chicken, cheese, sugar, fish, carrots, beans. Every single thing you consume has its own life force. Everything depends on everything else. Everything is in everything else. We give and take from here. In a way, we are not separate from what we observe, from our environment. We are it. No matter how much we'd like to think otherwise, The first law of thermodynamics states that energy can neither be created nor be destroyed. It can only be transformed from one form to another. I first observed this in food. Onions are chopped and cooked with tomatoes to form a sauce. I 
I eat it along with the wheat bread. The onions and the wheat were collected from unsuspecting plants in some quiet field. Now they are in my plate. I consume them. I know many do not like to think about this, but the fact is what we eat gets processed into energy. And some get transformed and comes out like clockwork. Human and animal feces alike are then consumed by thousands of other life forms. Insects, bacteria, invertebrates, invertebrates. They then turn that into energy and then the cycle continues. Even in death, we continue to live. I personally think that this grand recycling is what death signifies. Not complete cessation, but a transfer of energy. What else does food mean? I think it means love. Food is often the first source of comfort and warmth the newborn gets after experiencing the trauma of childbirth. Babies start to show signs of wanting to eat about 15 minutes after birth. Same goes with other mammals and not just mammals. Be it a human mother feeding her baby, or a cat feeding her litter, or a bird feeding her chicks. We can see that food is one of the first opportunities for them to process their new reality. It is a source of strength, trust, love, and bonding. I often think how food and food-based traditions can even bridge race and religious differences and invite dialogue and understanding between cultures. I was working at an Indian restaurant in Toronto several years ago. This man one day walked into a restaurant seeking shelter from the pouring rain. The restaurant was empty. He hesitated to come in. He was standing near the door, looking at the rain. His discomfort was obvious. He didn't want to be there. He looked angry. I invited him in and offered a seat. He yelled at me, saying that he was only inside because of the rain and he doesn't like ethnic food. I knew instinctively that he didn't like me. There was a visible disgust in his face. At that point, the manager of the restaurant came out, a kind, soft-spoken, yet persuasive man. He began talking to our guest, asking him questions and engaging him. We quickly realized that our guest had problems not just with us, but our race. That's when my manager did something that I wouldn't have even conceived of doing. He went inside the kitchen and brought with him a plate of fresh potato bhajis with tamarind and mint sauce and a cup of masala chai. In India, we often have this dish during monsoon when it is cold, dark, and wet. It is our comfort food. After some back and forth, my manager convinced our guest to take a seat and have this dish. The rain gave no sign of relenting. I didn't engage with the man partly because I was upset and somewhat angry. We left him alone. But I watched his face from a distance. He dipped the bhaji in the tamarind sauce and took a bite. He closed his eyes. For a split second, I saw bliss. That fried potato dish spoke to him despite of his fear and ideology, if only for a split second. He sat there for some time finishing the tea and the dish. I saw him several times after that incident. He only spoke to my manager. He asked what each dish was and tried different things off the menu. You can hate people, a specific culture, a specific race, but you cannot hate food. It is the purest form of comfort and love. I often show my love and appreciation for the people in my life through cooking. If I'm making a meal for you, you can be sure that I'm grateful that you are in my life. Cooking for me is like meditation. It is the only source of calm in this increasingly attention deficit world.
When I cook or eat a good meal, I am completely in the moment, enjoying every second of the cooking process, every bite of the food. I am completely present, and that's it. All my wonder, my curiosity, my anger, my anxiety, my resentment, everything ends there. And I think that is the meaning of life, just simply being. I hope you enjoyed all the cooking we did for this video. If you like food and being in the present moment and cooking, I have two shows to recommend for you. One is a Japanese show called The Midnight Diner. It's streaming on the Netflix and it is one of my favorite shows of all time. It talks about food, life, love and the art of letting go. The next one is called Samurai Gourmet. It is also on the Netflix. It is also a Japanese show, but it's not as heavy as The Midnight Diner but it's still lighthearted, fun, engaging, and also delicious food, of course. Personally, I love watching food and food-based TV shows and films. So if you have any recommendations for me, please let me know in the comments below. Language doesn't matter, I can watch anything. Finally, if you like this video, please feel free to share, like, comment, and subscribe. Every little bit helps. Also, I want to thank all of my Patreon supporters for their help and motivation. Thank you so much and see you in the next video.